Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to start the derivation of propagation of TM waves in rectangular waveguide. In this uh, TM waves in rectangular waveguide, here also we are going to calculate the wave equations for EX, EY, HX, HY. <coughs> Previously, we have discussed the propagation of waves in rectangular waveguide. That means generally what type, any type of wave can travel in the rectangular waveguide that may be a TE wave or TM wave. Now we are particularly dealing about a TM wave for that what is the amount of electric field in X and Y directions and what is the amount of magnetic field in X and Y directions we are going to calculate. <coughs> So, TM wave, we are now we are going to study about TM wave. So, what is TM wave? TM wave is nothing but transverse magnetic, transverse magnetic wave. So, transverse magnetic, nothing but magnetic uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field. The wave is existed which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Nothing but electric field is existed and magnetic field is equal to 0. <coughs> that is EZ. If, if we have taken the direction of propagation is in Z. EZ is equal to nothing but not equal to 0. And magnetic field HZ is equal to 0. This is what the TM wave stands for. <coughs> we know already in the last video we have considered a, consider a rectangular waveguide in which the breadth is along the breadth is along x direction <coughs> and this is y direction that is nothing but width ok and now the rectangular waveguide just is placed in the direction of propagation in Z. This is the direction of propagation where we have Z. Okay, that's why every parameter is just in the denominator we will be indicating Z means Z is the direction of propagation. Now, the TM wave equation <coughs> Tm wave equation is already we know delta square Ez is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon Ez. After simplification this one I am not doing all those calculations because I have already explained in the previous uh, uh, generic equations uh, like uh, propagation of waves in rectangular waveguide. So, do square by do x square ez plus do square ez by do y square plus h square ez is equal to <coughs> 0. So, already we know what is h square. h square is nothing but gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon. We know that h square is equal to gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon. What is gamma? Gamma is equal to dou by dou z. It is an operator towards the z direction. Now, our aim is to find our aim is to find the four parameters. Always we are going to find these four parameters. Ex, Ey, Hx and hy whatever may be the derivation like uh, propagation of waves or propagation of te waves or propagation of tm waves our aim is to find these four parameters ex ey hx and hy because if any one of these component is existed then we can say that wave is existed if all these four together zero then we can say that wave is not existed that we have seen in the case of tm <coughs> okay now assume before going into the calculations, just let us assume Ez, Hz is equal to 0. So, we no, no need to worry about the magnetic field in the direction of propagation. So, Hz is equal to 
some two parameters x into y x into y it's a product we are just we are just assuming the e z electric field in the direction of z is equal to the product of two variables x and y where x is nothing but a pure function of a pure function of x x is nothing but a pure function of x y is nothing but a pure function of pure function of y okay we are not involved we are not making the other parameters to involve just we are taking the e z as a product of two parameters x and y because it is having the differentiation with respect to x one time and with respect to y one time so if we are making the ez as a, a two variables like x and y because we are making we are just calculating or simplifying this equation using two variable method using two variable method okay that's why uh, aim is to find ex ey hx hy using i will write here two variable method two or separate variable method separate variable method so two separate variables are nothing but x and y what are the, what are the x and y x is nothing but a pure function of x y is nothing but a pure function of y what is the use of taking this x is a pure function of x and y is a pure function of y when you are going to inter, uh, <coughs> substitute this ez is equal to xy here uh, whichever the factor like x into y x is a pure function of y that will be in the uh, differentiation and remaining parameter will come out okay i will tell now substitute this ez in this equation in the main equation now do square by do x square into x y plus do square by do y square into x y plus h square x into y is equal to 0 now x is a pure function of x so x has to be derivated with respect to x and y is a constant so take y outside do square x by do x square with respect to x we cannot uh, derivate y <coughs> that's why y is taken out and in this case x is constant because we are deriving with respect to y so do square y by do y square plus h square x y is equal to 0 so take x y common completely and it is 1 by x do square x by do x square plus 1 by y do square y by do y square plus h square x uh, plus h square is equal to 0 so finally we will be have we have the equation 1 by x x y or uh, send it to other side it becomes 0 so 1 by x do square x by do x square plus 1 by y do square y by do y square plus h square is equal to 0 okay again assume again assume like 1 by x do square x square by do x square is equal to minus b square and the second parameter 1 by y do square y by do y square is equal to minus a square then what about h square h square is equal to it is minus b square plus minus a square if we have taken under the other side then it is a square plus b square so h square we can write it as a square plus b square what is a 
1 by x do square x by do x square and what is b square minus uh, b square 1 by uh, a is nothing but 1 by y do square y by do y square <coughs> and b is having 1 by x do square x square by do x square now the solutions of this x and y can be obtained by using ordinary second order differential equations see x and y can be derived by using ordinary second order differential equations so for that the solution for x and y see finally we need to calculate e x e y h x h y so for that we have assumed e h z is a product of x and y now we need to simplify what is x and what is y if we are able to find the solutions for x and y then definitely we will be having the solutions for e z so that we will be having the solution for e x e y h x and h y derivation is somewhat uh, lengthy but it is understandable okay <clears throat> the solution of x and y can be obtained can be obtained by using ordinary second order differential equation second order differential equation so we have taken x is equal to c1 cos bx <coughs> plus c2 sin bx okay and similarly y is equal to c3 cos a x this is small x okay uh, this is small x this is small y a is related to y b is related to x make a note of this okay plus c4 sin a y <coughs> so what about uh, we know a b x and y what about c1 c2 c3 c4 all these are some constants where c1 c2 c3 and c4 are constants now we need to find these four conditions by using boundary conditions the solutions the values <coughs> for these constants can be calculated using boundary conditions boundary conditions <coughs> now we need to use boundary conditions to calculate c1 c2 c3 c4 okay so whatever it is if you substitute this x and y what happens finally e z is equal to e z is equal to x into y we know we have assumed that e z is equal to two separate variables x into y so if you substitute this x into y here it is c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx into c3 cos ay plus c4 sin ay <coughs> okay so this is what the equation number one 
let us consider this is the equation 1 e z is equal to x into y now we need to apply boundary conditions on this equation e z so that by simplifying this equation we will be having the solutions for c1 c2 c3 c4 four different boundary conditions for four different constants okay uh, i will uh, tell this boundary conditions in the next video thank you